Okay, so example 13 from the chapter 4 to examples packet for which you have keys. Um, I wanted to work this one out because uh, it's good to just kind of be able to see a tangent one. Uh, so this graph, it either looks like tangent or it looks like cotangent, and it turns out you can write one of each. Um, the trick with the cotangent one, you might remember tangent does this thing, whereas cotangent does that thing. So if I were to flip cotangent, though, to get negative cotangent, well, now it looks like tangent. So um, when we do cotangent, we're going to have to do some sort of flip on it. So first, let's do tangent, because that one's easier. y equals tan x will be our parent. And uh, the important features of tan x, the asymptotes are at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Uh, the center of it is 0, 0. And then we've got two other important points on it. This one is pi over 4, 1. And this one is negative pi over 4, negative 1. Okay, so those turn into these three points here. And then, let's see, this asymptote looks to me like it's at negative pi over 4. And this one looks like it is at, let's see, that'd be 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over, well, oh, no, no, sorry, that's 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4. So this one's at x equals 7 pi over 4. So um, let's see what we can figure out from this. Uh, one thing right away, the period here is, how far apart is that? That's 8 pi over 4, so the period is 2 pi. Okay, so period equals 2 pi. Well, that means that uh, since the original tangent function has a period of pi, it means I had to horizontally stretch by 2 to get my function. And that's by taking my period and dividing by the original period. So 2 pi over 2 gives me a horizontal stretch of 2. Um, let's look at the horizontal shift. Remember, it's, it's a good idea to do the stretches before the shifts, in my opinion. So uh, for the horizontal shift, you want to look at the zero line right here. So the zero line goes right through the middle of the tangent graph at zero, zero. And so that turned into this point right here. So that means that I go 3 pi over 4 to the right. So let's say horizontal shift of 3 pi over 4 to the right. Uh, and then let's do a vertical stretch. Or I think it's a stretch anyway, we'll see. So um, normally we would go up one to get our important point and down one to get our important point. Well, if you look at this, it's actually up two and down two now. So that looks like a vertical stretch of two. And then we have, let's see, what else do we have? We have a vertical shift. So the vertical shift, uh, we take this line, the x equals 0 line, and look at where that moves to. That's now right here at x equals negative 4. Uh, so that would be, or sorry, y. y equals 0 turned into y equals negative 4. So that would be a vertical shift uh, 4 units down. So now at this point, we can make our general point. It used to be a tan a, and that just turned into... So horizontal stretch of 2, and 3 pi over 4 to the right. And then vertical stretch of 2, and 4 units down. And so then I call that first term x. And if I isolate the a, it'd be x minus 3 pi over 4, and then all times a half right here equals a, and then I can rewrite this thing as y equals 2 tan, my a is 1 half x minus 3 pi over 4, and then minus the extra 4 on the outside. So here's the tangent version of this graph right here. So let me take this, I'm going to shrink it down, move it over to the side. So there's the first part. That's pretty tiny. Hopefully you can still read that okay. Uh, let me expand it a little bit. Uh, 
There we go. Okay. Um, so now let's do it with cotangent. And this one I think is a little bit trickier. Y equals cotan X. So the parent cotan X, if I draw one period of it, has asymptotes at zero and at pi. And then that one looks like this. So this point right here is pi over two zero. And then I've got a point here at pi over four one, and another point here at three pi over four negative one. Okay, so those are my three important points and I've got my asymptotes. Uh, so let's take a look at what we have to do. So vertical, um, let's do vertical stretch first. So the vertical stretch, well, if we go up one and down one to get the important points, well, now it's up two, down two. And so that stays the same. Uh, vertical shift. Actually, before we do the vertical shift, notice vertically, if we reflect this thing, then I'm going to get this arrow ends up down here instead, right? So then I would get this. So let's do the vertical reflection right now, right? Kind of simplify things. So now it's got the right general shape. And then vertical shift, well, I have an asymptote. Remember, you always want to look at the zero. So I got an asymptote at x equals zero. And if I move it over pi over four units to the left, then I get this asymptote right here. You could say seven pi over four to the right, but pi over four to the left's closer. So let's say vertical shift pi over four to the right. Sorry, to the left. So there's all my vertical stuff. Um, and let's do, oh, I'm sorry, that's not, uh, that's terrible. <laughs> that's horizontal. <laughs> Vertically, I'm looking at zero, right? The zero line ends up moving to the negative four line. So it's, it's really a vertical shift, four down. Sorry, brain fart. Okay. The horizontal one is the one that I did. Uh, let's look at the horizontal stretch or shrink, right? So um, actually, before I write the word, the period's still 2 pi on this function, and the period on the parent is pi. So if I take my period divided by the parent's period, I get the horizontal stretch or shrink, shrink, stretch. Well, that's 2 pi over pi, which is 2. That's bigger than 1, so it's really a stretch. And then the horizontal shift is what I did a second ago by accident. X equals zero moved over to X equals negative pi over four. So that would be pi over four to the left. So then at this point, I've got enough to make up my general point. A cotan A turns into, uh, let's see, horizontal stuff first. So two A minus pi over four. And then if I do a stretch by two and a reflection, it's negative two cotan A, and then down four, so minus four. And then I can do the same thing that I did before, call this thing X, and isolate the A term, and then plug that into this side. So that's gonna be Y equals negative two cotan one half x plus pi over four, all minus four. All right, and there we go, there's the other version. So we got one version here, one version there. All right, I hope that helps.